Hi y'all, this is so so blessed. Welcome to the blessed place. How y'all doing? Um, I am going to dye my hair. I'm going to try to do this as I talk to you guys. I don't know how this is going to work because I, I really need a mirror. But um, I'm going to give it a try. Um, I don't know. I, I tweeted earlier, I hate dyeing my hair. I hate doing it myself. I love to get my hair dyed. I just hate doing it myself, but I don't know. Saves lots of money to do it yourself, so. And once I and once I've I've done it, it's like, you know, hey, I'm proud. I did it myself. It only cost me four dollars, whatever. But let's see if I can do this. Oh Lord, no, I can't do this. I don't even know what I'm where I'm painting that. Then I'll probably have it all over my keyboard. Mm -mm, that probably get all over my keyboard, everything. No, I don't think I can do this. But let's see. Let's see. Ooh, I can feel the dye popping all in my eyes. Lordy. Um, what do y'all do yourself to save money? I know some people are good at painting, refurbishing furniture, um, sewing their own clothes. And then y'all, when I dye my hair, I do my face like I'm putting on makeup. I'm like, I don't know why do I make, I don't know why I make all these crazy faces while I'm doing my, dyeing my hair. But. Y'all, this is going to look like a hot ghetto mess. Anyway, but I just wanted to come talk to y'all. Because, I don't know, today was a hard day. Today was a hard day, y'all. Um, because... Well, first of all, I haven't been able to just get rest like I wanted to because... Every day, I've been working a lot, and I, you know, y'all know, though most of you know, I work 12-hour shifts when I do work, um, and I might I only work three days a week, but they're long hours, you know. So I'm almost working, you know, 40 hours, 40 hours. I'm almost working a full-time job. I'm working like 36 hours a week, but only three days. Um, hey, I'm not complaining. I, I'm not complaining at all. I, I thank God. Oh my goodness, I thank God for my part-time job. Something that I love to do and get paid and get to choose my hours. I mean, I, you just, that's God's awesomeness. So I'm not complaining there. I'm just, you know, saying how busy I am. And then when I do have my days off and I say, oh my God, I'm just going to stay in bed all day. I'm just, then it's like, got to take care of church business or um, today I had to take care of car repair business um, taking the car to the shop finding a ride back and let me just tell you how good God is I mean I thank him for the small for the smallest things I mean the smallest things. I go to take the truck to the shop and my husband says you know just ask them to give you a ride back because my husband is you know friendly pretty friendly um, with the owner so it's like just ask them to give you a ride back it's like two miles up the road and um, when I get there they are so busy I can just tell you know I had to wait 10 minutes to be helped and people are in line waiting and there are about 10 cars out there look like needing to be repaired or whatever so I'm like I'm not about to ask these people for a ride you know I don't care if my husband is on first name basis you know with um the owner you know he gets he's on first name basis with everybody he meets so I'm there and I don't want to call my sister Deborah love to talk Deb because Deborah gets in from work about 6 a.m. and she needs to come in and sleep you know 
she got a husband, she got kids, you know, she can come in and sleep. So I don't want to drag her out of her bed. And um, my daughter's at work, so I'm sitting there literally saying, Lord, send me somebody. On the one hand, I'm saying, Lord, send somebody. Just, you know, send somebody by that I know, that I feel comfortable with, that I would get in the car with. Um, and I even thought about, you know, walking, but I didn't come prepared to walk. You know, I didn't come dressed to walk. Because, like I said, it is about two miles up the road. Mm, three at the most. But about three miles. So, I'm there. And then my husband's friend literally calls my phone. And he's wanting to know if I'm home because he, my husband has some equipment. My husband had some equipment in the garage he wanted to borrow. And he wanted to know if I was home so he could get into our garage. And I said, ah. I'm not home, but I'm a, up the road at the repair shop, and I really could use a ride home. And he's like, Miss D. It's funny he called me Miss D. Miss D, I come get you. I'm just right up the road. So he came and got me, and I was like, oh, small favors. Look at God. Thank you, Jesus. So then... um. So I wait all day for the truck to be repaired. Finally, I call to ask them if the truck is done being repaired. And they're like, we called your husband. And I'm like, I told the person that I dropped the car off with that my husband is at work. He cannot answer his phone um, to call me. But the guy that I instructed to do that is not the owner. The owner, like I said, who knows my husband, got him on speed dial. He was like, I called Charles and left a message on his cell phone. And I was like, I, I told you all to call my cell. He said, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. He said, because I was out and about today. And um, I just called your husband from my, you know, I have him on my speed dial. So I just, I was like, oh. Um, anyway, so. And then now, okay, here it is, 5.15, and they're about to close. And I need a ride up there to go get my vehicle after it's been repaired. The repair bill is another thing. Okay, we'll get to. Because this is going to be one of the long videos, right? While I try to do something to my hair. Um, so then, I'm trying to find a ride back up to get my vehicle. So, by this time, I figure Deborah has gotten some sleep. Uh, but let me call her. Oh, actually, I don't, I, I don't want Deborah to come pick me up. I'm, I want her husband to come pick me up because I don't want to you know, get Deborah out of her bed or her comfort. She's got to go back to work, you know, at 10 p.m. So here it is now, 6 p.m. She's got to go back to work, you know, in four hours. I don't want to get her out of her house and out of her bed. So I call her and ask if her husband is home and available to um, come pick me up. And she said, he has my car and he's gone, you know, run some errands. I said, oh, okay. She's like, you okay? I was like, I'm just trying to find a ride to go pick up the truck. She says, I'll try to call him and I'll find him. So she calls me back and says, she, you know, she can't get a hold of him because his phone is going straight to voicemail. And she doesn't even know if he took it with him or if he left his phone home. So I called my daughter, Derricka, but she's at the gym. Her phone goes straight to voicemail because after work, she gets off work at 4.30 p.m. and she goes straight to LA Fitness, where I should be going. So then, who else I call? I call a couple of friends. I mean, just can't find anybody. You know, that time of day, most people are probably working. Can't find anybody, or I got old numbers, and I'm calling somebody who I don't even know who this person is because I haven't called this number in so long. So, um, I pray again. Lord, send me somebody to go pick up my vehicle. But the, the place closes at 6. Mind you, I find out at 5 o'clock that my truck is ready, 5.15. So, it's getting to be about 5 minutes to 6. I can't find a ride. I call the repair place and I tell them, look, you're going to have to keep the car until in the morning. I can't find a ride up there. And they said, well, uh, ma'am, we'll be here. We do close at 6, but tonight we'll be here to about 7. We're still working on some 
some repairs. We'll be here until about 7. If you find a ride up here, call and let us know. We'll wait. Soon as I get up the phone, I'm like, oh, Lord, I really do need our vehicle. I don't want it to sit at the repair shop overnight. Lord, send me somebody. The phone rings. I'm not lying to you guys. It's Deborah. Deidre, do you still need a ride? Yes, I do. I still need a ride. Okay, my husband is back from running errands. I'll be right there. I'm like, Deborah, you don't have to get out of your bed. She's like, no, I got plenty of rest. I'm good. She's like, I, did. I slept today and I got plenty of rest. So she comes five minutes, sure enough, about five minutes, she comes pick me up. She takes me to get the truck two, three miles up the road. Okay. So that's the end of my story about how good God is, how he cares about even the smallest little things. I mean, you guys, if you don't know, pray for the smallest little thing. He cares just that much. So, I get there. My husband tells me um, earlier, baby, the repair is only going to cost $50, $60. I get there. The man says two hundred and forty-two dollars. I said, "Oh, what is?" Because there was a crack in the radiator. No. In the power. No, something. I don't. I don't know, you guys. But there was a crack in something that they had to order the part and they fixed. Not the radiator, because I found out that there is a crack in the radiator and that needs fixing. This was a crack in the antifreeze. Whatever holds the antifreeze. What? Or the water, the water pump. I don't know, something. There was a crack. I'm not good at cars and repairs and all of that. So, but whatever it is, it costs $242. The part was $150 and then labor. Y'all, here I am going there thinking that I'm thinking that I'm about to spend $60, $70, maybe $80 and end up the bill is $242. Y'all, I was just so hurt. I was so hurt. And I was like, I was mad at my husband. I was mad. I'm, I'm going to tell the truth. I was pissed because I'm like, what kind of understanding did he get? You know, it's like, we need this money. And why do we need it? I mean, not to mention that we need for bills. But also, start leave, tomorrow, it's Thursday, we're leaving to go out of town. Well, I am. Me and my sister Denise, my round hips. And um, so one other person were leaving to go out of town to go to NASCAR, go to Miami Homestead to NASCAR because we're, our church, you know, y'all know we work NASCAR races. There are merchandise event trailers, right? Um, we work their event trailers um, selling their merchandise and our church gets a percentage and that money goes to that money goes to our um, church bills, rent, electric, incidentals, all kinds of stuff. So, because we're a little small church and the offering and the tithes don't cover um, everything it needs to. So, hey, we think outside of the box, right? Um, so... He says $242. And I'm pissed because I'm like, okay, what kind of understanding did my husband get here for him to think that this is going to cost $60, $70? Anyway, but instead of crying like I wanted to cry, um, I started thinking about the message that I had just heard the night before from Joel Osteen. And he was talking about um, oh my god, this message was so chocked full of awesome stuff and, and, uh, chock full of stuff that he says so much. But the, the one part that I kept quoting to myself is that this is not meant, this is not working against me, but working for me. This is for my good and not for my bad. So all so after he, I had to pay that two hundred and forty something dollars, I started just quoting to myself that although this is a setback, that was not it's not working for my bad. It's working for my good. 
it is working on my behalf yes even having to pay this repair bill although I don't quite understand the one step forward the two step backwards um, I don't quite understand it I don't understand what God is doing what he's up to but um, I am gonna trust him I am gonna trust him and I'm gonna trust that this was work this was working for me and not against me that all things work together for the good to them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose I know I am both I know I am I love the Lord and I know I am a called according to his purpose I know I try my best to be an obedient child of God. So this is working. This is going to work for my good. So I started meditating on that. I started meditating on on how good God is. I'm meditating on the fact that I have health and strength. And the fact that I had the $242. Because there were some time and there are some days that I would not have had that $242. Uh, the fact that although um, I had come out... We had to come out of the pocket two hundred and forty some dollars. The fact that in two days it's payday. Um, thank God my husband, um, God bless the, bless my husband with a job, and he gets paid weekly. You know, cause I get paid bi-weekly, and it's just a blessing to have that weekly paycheck. I've never had a job that had a weekly paycheck. What about y'all? I've never had, but then you know I've never had. I haven't had many jobs. I was at one job for twenty two years. Before that, I had a couple of part, you know, a couple of part time jobs. Before and I was in college so I don't have that much experience uh, with different paychecks but I've always had bi-weekly paychecks so such a blessing that my husband gets paid weekly so I started thinking on those things you know thinking on those things which are good or things which are lovely those things which are, which are pure think on those things I can't remember what it is Philippians 4.13 or something like that I can't remember, don't quote me on that, but it is in Philippians where it tells you to think on these things. And um, whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things that are pure. So I start thinking on and meditating on the goodness of God. I start thinking of um, that message, that powerful, awesome, encouraging, motivating, inspiring message that Joel Osteen preached that I had just heard. Because how soon we forget, you know, when the word is going out. Your hallelujah, amen. And it's, it sounds so good. But then when trouble comes, trouble in my way, trouble in my way, I have to cry sometimes. God, that's what I wanted to do today. I wanted to cry so bad. Oh, because not only that, now, not only, okay, it wasn't just a $242 repair bill, but then the man told me, oh, I left a message on Charles' voicemail, and I told him that you also have a crack in your radiator and that's going to be seven hundred dollars to get fixed and i said baby you know that ain't what i said though i said to myself baby long as that truck will go it's gonna be a few weeks and i said well um well i can't drive it right he said yeah just have to keep it um keep it keep water in it um Keep the fluids. So I said, Kathy, keep the fluids. And I said, Well, that's what we'll be doing. We'll be keeping the fluids and we'll get that fixed in a couple of weeks, a month. I, mean, I don't know. Now, maybe a long little drive, all right. But um, yeah. So seven hundred dollars. So you know, y'all, it was just a, it was a hard day. It was a discouraging day. It was, but then it had you know, a mixture of blessings too. Like I said, the small things. When two times when I needed a ride and I just prayed to God, Lord, send me a ride. And how he just sent someone by, you know, to help me out. So though um, I had a hard day and I wanted to cry, um, you know, I could see the blessings in it also. I'm healthy. You know, I ate food today. I had clothes, shelter, got a shelter. Um, my husband got a job. Oh my God, thank you, Jesus. He has his job. Oh, my husband was has been unemployed for three years, y'all. But he did, you know, like life hands you lemonade, lemons, you make lemonade. He did make lemonade called um, 
lawn care business. So when he was laid off from his construction job, or actually the whole plant closed, and they were laid off, he started a he started a um, lawn care business, and that was starting to get off the ground. I mean, he still has it. It's just and now he has to work it in when he can. You know, when he because he worked long days, six thirty in the morning till usually about six thirty to seven thirty at night. Like tonight he got off at seven thirty. One night he got off at eight thirty. But he he and I both say we won't complain. We thank the Lord. So yeah, yeah, even though today was a hard day, but it's finally too my husband came home and I was telling him about our day Tell him, you know, he he got a little upset at that bill. He said, because, baby, I did not misunderstand. He told me $50 for the part, and my husband tried to call him. But by then, my husband just getting on work, 8 o'clock at night. Um, he couldn't reach him. But um, I guess he'll be trying to call him tomorrow. Okay, y'all. Uh, I don't know what this... I don't know what this bad job going to look like because I'm up here trying to talk to y'all. But hey, I don't see no worry. But I'll come back and show y'all once it's all done and I wash it out. But um, moral of the story is no matter how bad it gets, no matter how bad it seems, there is still something to give God praise for because as long as you have breath in your body everything else is gravy everything else is gravy so as long as you have breath in your body give God praise because when those praises go up the blessings come down I'm in expectation of my blessings alright check y'all later Okay, you guys, I'm back. This is the finished product. Not bad for do-it-yourself um, for an amateur. But anyway, just to sum up what I talked about and rambled on for 21 minutes, um, today was a very hard day for me, emotionally, spiritually. And... Um, and then when my husband got home, I told him about the car and everything else that went on in my day. And uh, the good, the things that I were grateful for, and those things that um, just got to me. And um, he got a little disappointed, upset, uh, showed a little emotion. You know, I mean, his showing emotion was, dang, you know. But um, then we talked about it, we prayed. And uh, we encouraged each other, and he more so encouraged me. Maybe I encouraged him 25%, he encouraged me 75%. But we encouraged each other and uh, just reminded each other that God's got us, you know, He's got our back. And um, we've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. So, anyways, God is good. All right, y'all. So, just wanted to, um, all right, also let y'all know that. Um, I won't be making any videos for probably the next five or six days. I'll be extremely busy in Miami Homestead at the NASCAR races. Um, unless I capture a few videos on my cell phone. Um, but I'll try to get some um, some footage for my life in 3D. Alright, love y'all. Y'all be blessed. And like I said, stay encouraged. Love y'all.